Well, good afternoon and welcome to the National Capital Planning Commission's February 2nd, 2003 open session. First, Ms. Kloster, can you please take the roll call? Sure. Commissioner Kosar? Here. Commissioner McMahon? Here. Commissioner May? Here. Commissioner Argo? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Hewlett? Here. Chair Goodman? Present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Green? Here. Commissioner Wright? Here. Vice Chair Dixon? Here. Thank you. Uh, uh, Commissioner Cash? I think he is not attending today. And Commissioner Davis? Here. Thank you. And I note that Marcella Costa, the Executive Director, Ann Schuyler, General Counsel, and Diane Sullivan, the Director of the Urban Design and Plan Review Division, are also in the meeting. Thank you, Ms. Koster. Thank you very much. And noting the presence of a quorum, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Today's meeting is being live streamed and will be available in a few days um, uh, as a video on the NCPC's uh, website. If there's no objection, the agenda as posted is adopted and is the order of business. Uh, we will now play a short video clip of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. NCPC will continue to conduct its meetings online until the renovations uh, on the commission chambers are complete. I want to share uh, how we will be conducting commission business. During commission deliberations, I will use the round robin format to ask each commissioner if they have any comments. As a reminder, during deliberations, all commissioners should be on video during that time unless you are experiencing technical issues. At other times when commissioners wish to be recognized, they should unmute and ask. The next agenda item, uh, number two, is the report of the chair. And so I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am Terry Hawks Goodman, as you know, and it is my honor to have been appointed as the at-large representative and as commission chair by President Biden uh, earlier this year in January. And I've had the opportunity to speak to several commissioners and I've worked closely with executive director uh, Costa and the agency staff to get up to speed on how the agency and the commission conduct business. And uh, I've also learned a lot about the exciting initiatives that NCPC has underway. And frankly, these first few weeks have been a bit overwhelming, but also very inspiring. I am from Dubuque, Iowa, on the banks of the Mississippi River, and I have a long uh, career public, in, in public service, and I've worked in community building, which is my passion, and I've touched um, on all uh, aspects that uh, create and shape cities and communities, including transportation, equity and sustainable development, environmental, environmental uh, uh, resilience, and particularly water resource matters, and also technology. And as chair, as I said uh, in my letter to the commission, uh, I will maintain a laser focus on the this administration's priorities of equity and climate resilience. My personal passions, as I said before, include access and inclusion, climate resilience, historic preservation, and also partnership, because I do believe partnerships and um, collaboration are essential to success uh, in, in many endeavors that we all pursue. Um, I look forward um, to keeping people at the heart of our work throughout my career uh, to make things happen. It's been critical to bring people together, to find consensus, to listen and work collaboratively. And I seek to have our commission meetings welcome and open to engaging the public. And I appreciate uh, our um, applicants and we look forward to treating them all with respect and dignity. And most importantly, I look forward to working with all of you, particularly uh, the commissioners. And I thank you for the warm welcome that you have extended to me. So thank you very much. Agenda item number three is the report of the executive director, Mr. Costa, please. Thank you, uh, Chair Goodman and good afternoon. 
First, on behalf of the staff, I'd like to welcome Chair Goodman to NCPC. Congratulations on your appointment, and we look forward to working with you. Thank NCPC you. has just released its uh, 2022 Year in Review Report, looking back at the past year's activities and looking ahead to new and continuing efforts. We've had a really busy 2022, including the release of the Pennsylvania Avenue concepts, the announcement of Beyond Granite, and review of many significant master plans and projects in this region. The annual report is publicly available on NCPC's website. You have my written report in your packets, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Acosta. Does the commission have any questions? Hearing none, agenda item number four is the legislative update. Uh, Ms. Oh, I I'm sorry. There is, there is a question. I'm sorry, I, I, Commissioner Hewlett. I didn't have a question, but I wanted to say, as the along with Brian Green, um, Green, um, we were the newbies before you, uh, Madam Chair. And so the, I found the year in review particularly helpful because it, it encompassed so much um, that we were not able to see. Um, and I really wanted to say kudos um, to you on, on, on the year in review. And since I have the floor right now, may we say welcome, Chair Goodman. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Commissioner Hewlett. Are there any other questions? Well, hearing non agenda number four is a legislative update. So, Ms. Ann Schuyler, if you could please make that report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Let me just start by saying, on behalf of all staff, welcome. And we're just thrilled that you are here. And we Thank look you. forward to working with you. And I'm sure you will have a very successful tenure. Um, I do not have a legislative report today. It is very early in the 118th session of Congress, such that there has been no legislation that relates or impacts NBC, NCPC introduced at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schuyler. Agenda item number five is the consent calendar. There is one item on this month's consent calendar and it's uh, approval of the preliminary, preliminary site and building plans for, for Fort Belvoir North Area Headquarters Annex. This project was submitted by the Department of the Army. Are there any questions or discussion on the consent calendar items? So move. There Second. is a motion. Second. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. I think I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Coster to clear, I can't clarify. I'm not hearing all the voices. Okay, sure. Yeah. Commissioner Dixon, perhaps? Yes, that was uh, the motion okay. was made by Commissioner Dixon, and I believe the second was made by Commissioner Hewlett. Um, and uh, if you would like, I can proceed with the roll call. Yes, if you could uh, confirm the motion, the second, and proceed with the roll call, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Um, uh, Commissioner Kozar? Yes. Uh, Commissioner McMahon? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. Commissioner Argo? Yes. Commissioner Hewlett? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Chair Goodman? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Green? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Presuming this motion is to pass the consent calendar since we're, you know, jumping the gun here. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, Commissioner uh, Dixon? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Davis? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Agenda item 6A is a request to approve comments on the concept master plan for joint base Meyer Henderson Hall, including Fort McNair. Ms. Herr? Yes. Can you see the screen? Yes, and we can hear you. Great, thank you. All right. Good afternoon, Chair Goodman and Commissioners. The United States Army has submitted their 2021 Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall and Fort McNair Area Development Plan for concept review and comment by the Commission. The Commission previously approved a master plan in 2014. Today we are looking at the concept review of the Area Development Plan for Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall and Fort McNair. Concept reviews are intended for larger or more complex master plans to get feedback from the Commission earlier in the master plan development process. 
at the concept review for the master plan, the Commission should be focused on issues such as, is the concept consistent with NCPC's comprehensive plan and other policies? Is the concept appropriate for the site? Are there particularly unique or complex issues? The area development plan is for Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. The Joint Base includes two locations, Meyer Henderson Hall in Fort Meyer, Virginia, and Fort McNair in Southwest Washington, DC. Meyer Henderson Hall is located immediately west of Arlington National Cemetery in the Pentagon. Fort McNair is located at the confluence of the Washington Channel and the Anacostia River, across the Anacostia from Joint Base Anacostia Bowling. There's a lot to cover, so this presentation will focus on the overview of the Area Development Plan first, or ADP. And as there are two separate bases in two jurisdictions, I will then review each base separately, including a general overview of the key components of the ADP and specific areas of concern. The proposed vision and goals of the ADP include maintaining a safe, secure, resilient, agile, and compact community that is responsive and, support and supportive to mission partners in the region, maintaining and strengthening partnerships with surrounding communities, enhancing quality of life, and managing integrated infrastructure, and retaining historic character and resources. The current ADP is a combination of individual vision and goals and area development plans for each base that were developed in 2016 and 2017, and then combined into the current ADP. Overall, the Commission comments favorably on the goals and objectives presented in the concept submission for the Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. There are several things, including a transportation management plan, that the Army will need to complete as part of the next ADP submission, all of which is outlined in the Executive Director's report and I will cover in this presentation. As noted here, the Army completed individual ADPs for Meyer Henderson Hall and Fort McNair in 2017 and combined them into the current ADP in 2021. The Army also signed the nationwide program comment on interwar air housing in 2020. At the completion of the current ADP, the Army drafted the unaccompanied enlisted personnel housing barracks addendum for inclusion with the ADP's concept review by the Commission. A full review of the barracks is expected later this year and an updated ADP is anticipated no earlier than 2024. In the next few slides, I will give an overview of Meyer Henderson Hall and the details of the ADP concept review. Meyer Henderson Hall is home to several Army and US Marine units, including headquarters for the Joint Base, Command Battalion, and Marine Corps, as well as the US Army Band, the Old Guard, the Radar US Army Clinic, and A Company, or the Commander in Chief's Guard. The northern portion of the base is primarily is primarily army focused mission and the southern portion is marine corps missions directly to the east is arlington national cemetery and to the west are residential and commercial developments in arlington county due to its proximity to arlington national cemetery this is also the base of operations for most honor guard services and burial teams a large percentage of burials in arlington national cemetery original originate from the old post chapel pictured here in addition, the military's largest child development center, named the Cody Child Development Center, is located in the Henderson Hall side of the base. The base has three entry points labeled in yellow and access directly to Arlington Cemetery, noted in green. The site analysis of the area development plan shows the focus of various areas of the campus and buildable and non-buildable open space. A majority of the land is planned for community support, noted in blue, and mission support in purple. As indicated here in yellow, the Fort Myer National Historic Landmark District includes a large portion of the north end of the base. In 2014, additional areas shown in blue were identified as eligible for inclusion in the historic district, but have not yet been added. Overall, the concept area development plan includes only 182,888 square feet of new construction and over a million square feet of renovation with almost no demolition. Renovated buildings are labeled in blue on the plan and new buildings are in orange. Much of this renovation focuses on mission critical facilities and the commission supports the proposed renovation projects throughout the campus, including renovations to barracks, general officer quarters, community facilities, important infrastructure, and establishing a centralized one-stop shop for base personnel. While the ADP was meant as a comprehensive plan which incorporated both bases, the ADP scope did not include a detailed analysis of Army family housing or barracks. 
the Army is focused on improving the quality of on-base housing and increasing the quantity. As such, the Army submitted an addendum to the 2021 ADP that addresses barracks housing. The Army is developing a family housing plan that will be submitted separately. Meyer Henderson Hall currently has a 200 bed deficit in permanent barracks for service members of the US Army and US Marine Corps. The unaccompanied enlisted personnel housing barracks addendum outlines five different courses of action the Army analyzed to meet the requirement for 200 new housing units. Course of action one called for the full demolition of buildings 250 and 251 noted here to construct a new barracks building. This option removed two historic buildings and the site was not large enough to accommodate 200 units. Course of action two extended buildings 250 and 251 with additions. However, it is too difficult to bring current buildings 250 and 251 up to residential housing standards and the additions would not generate the total 200 units needed. Course of action three would demolish buildings 410 and 412 which are located here and construct new barracks on the site. The site was deemed too small for this option. Buildings 250 and 250 would be converted to administrative space in this option. Course of Action 4 would demolish building 416 for a new barracks building. It was deemed the site was too small and as 416 is currently housing, it would not meet the overall unit goal. Again, buildings 250 and 251 would be converted to administrative space. Course of Action 5 would demolish buildings 426 through 432 and 434 through 436 and construct two new barracks on the site. As with prior options, buildings 250 and 251 would be converted to administrative space. While this course of action technically has no impact on the existing historic district, it does impact historic structures. The Army determined that these quarters fell under the program comment for interwar era housing, buildings, and structures and landscapes landscape features from 1919 to 1940, otherwise called the program comment. This agreement between the, uh, was between the Army and the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation signed in 2020. This slide is a combination of Course of Action 5, which we just reviewed, overlaid on the historic district boundaries of Fort Myer. The yellow line includes buildings 250 and 251 and is the Fort Myer National Landmark Historic District Boundary. The blue line that includes most of the buildings planned for demolition in Course of Action 5 is one of the areas determined eligible for the National Register of Historic Places expansion of the Fort Myer Historic District. The orange line demarcates the area that is covered by the program comment. The program comment is intended to balance historic preservation requirements with the Army's responsibility to provide quality housing for military members and their families. The program comment outlines the process by which the Army can demolish certain buildings as part of their Section 106 responsibility. Course of Action 5 was chosen as the preferred option because the buildings proposed for demolition in red, while historic, are outside the historic district. The pool and pool facilities have been closed for some time with no plans to reopen. And the quarters on Sheridan Avenue are a style already represented in the historic district. NCPC staff, along with staff from the Virginia Department of Historic Resources, have found that thus far, the Army is correctly following the process outlined in the program comment. And the course of action included, courses of action included in the addendum are prudent and feasible alternatives as required by the program comment, and the recommended course of action is appropriate for the campus. The addendum includes two equal-sized U-shaped barracks buildings, similar in size and shape to buildings immediately, immediately north. The layout includes connecting walking paths and a small parking area. The barracks addendum stated the tree removal is proposed with a two-to-one replacement mitigation method, and the commission requests the ADP be updated to reference the NCPC tree preservation and replacement policy outlined in the federal elements of the comprehensive plan. The architecture is intended to coordinate with the adjacent barracks buildings. As the Army is finalizing the details of the barracks for project submission, the Commission requests the Army work with NCPC staff in advance of the unaccompanied enlisted personnel housing barracks submission to ensure the project's design, scale, and landscaping is appropriate for the Fort Myer Historic District. In addition, the Commission recommends the Army update the ADP to include the barracks project and address any other applicable changes to the plan impacted by the barracks. 
Now I will review Fort McNair, located in Washington, D.C. Fort McNair was established in 1791 and is the third oldest military fort in continuous use. It is home to the Military District of Washington headquarters, the National Defense University, the National War College, as well as the White House Transportation Agency. In the upper left picture is an example of existing general officer quarters on the Washington Channel, which we will discuss later in the presentation. The existing seawall at the south end of the base, along with the Grant Building and Roosevelt Hall are also pictured. The base has two gates labeled with the yellow star. Due to its low-lying location at the confluence of the Washington Channel and Anacostia River, McNair is incredibly susceptible to both the 100-year floods shown in red and the 500-year flooding in orange. In addition to flooding risks, the base is at risk from sea level rise, with the southern portion and waterfront edges most impacted. The District Department of Transportation, District Departments of Transportation and Energy and Environment submitted a consolidated comment letter on the ADP that included concerns regarding a riverwalk trail, lack of floodplain and sea level rise planning or mitigation, among other things. The commission requests the Army coordinate with the District Department of Transportation and the Department of Energy and Environment on the comments outlined in their letter dated January 17, 2023, prior to the next ADP review. The regulating plan indicates the focus of various areas of the campus, including the mission support area at the northern end and the educational support as examples. As noted here in blue, most of the base is included in the District of Columbia's inventory of historic places as the Fort McNair Historic District. Fort McNair has also been determined eligible, but is not listed on the National Register of Historic Places. However, as indicated by the yellow boundary at the southern end of the base, the Army War College building, pictured here, is individually listed as a National Historic Landmark. This map also includes the area in red labeled FY22 National Defense Authorization Act Course of Action Study. The recently passed National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, contains Section 2104 that states demolition of District of Columbia, Fort McNair, quarters 4, 13, and 15. This section will require the Army, Secretary of the Army to demolish certain quarters at Fort McNair within one year of current occupants' departure. The NDAA was drafted beginning in May 2022 after completion of this ADP, then approved by Congress and signed by the President in December. The demolition of these quarters was not included in the ADP. The Commission finds that the removal of these historic homes will adversely affect the integrity and character of the historic district. However, the Commission does not have review authority over demolitions, and even if it did, the Commission's authority would not override the mandatory provision contained in the National Defense Authorization Act, which has been approved by Congress, signed by the President, and enacted into law. Similar to Meyer Henderson Hall, Fort McNair's development plan is primarily a renovation of existing buildings with a total of 455,970 square feet. Only 125,321 square feet will be new construction. The plan also includes 1,508 linear feet of perimeter fencing. Much of this new construction is split between a proposed mixed use complex with amphitheater and parking garage and a combined military district of Washington headquarters building, both circled on the plan. Overall, the commission supports the proposed renovation products, projects throughout the campus, specifically the renovation of officers quarters, modernizing training facilities, including the National Defense University, and modernized entry control gates and a new mixed use facility with parking garage for events. The commission also recommends the Army submit the draft ADP to the U.S. Commission of Fine Arts for review. The draft ADP for Fort McNair also includes a project labeled Z, noted here in blue on the illustrative master plan that calls for the construction of the new Military District of Washington headquarters. This will entail demolition of buildings 41 and 45, pictured here, and renovation of buildings 39 and 47, which will be combined with a new addition. Buildings 41 and 45 are within the Fort McNair Historic District and listed as historic structures. The draft ADP does not elaborate on the demolition of these buildings or describe the process or justification for their removal. The District State Historic Preservation Office has submitted comments related to this project that will need to be addressed in the updated ADP. It is also important to note that Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act is applicable to the entirety of the ADP, 
and that the Army stated they intend to formally initiate Section 106 with the identified consulting parties to consider the impact of the ADP to historic resources. The commission also noted that the demolition of buildings within the historic district raises larger questions about the future of the base. In particular, the fate of the remaining historic homes, the impact of sea level rise on the already vulnerable floodplain, and the compatibility of infill development if new development is warranted. As such, the commission requests the Army respond to these broader issues in the draft submission and evaluate the following in the courses of action. How existing and new construction in, construction in this area which is located in the 100 and 500 year floodplain will meet executive order 13690 pertaining to federal flood risk management. How the design and scale of new development will be compatible with the historic district if reconstruction is pursued. This concludes my presentation. I have incorporated recommendations throughout the presentation, so I will not read them, but I have included them here for your reference. Overall, the Commission supports the goals and objectives of the Area Development Plan. There are several areas of concern that are noted in the recommendations that will need to be addressed before the next submission. Thank you, and I'm available to answer any questions you may have, and I'm going to turn it over to U.S. Army Joint Base Garrison Commander Colonel David Bowling to say a few words and introduce his team. Colonel Bowling. Here we go. Um, Hi, uh, I just want to make sure everybody can hear us. We have some technical challenges. Yes, I we can, can hear you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so as um, as the lady mentioned, my name is Colonel Dave Bowling. I'm the commander for Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall, and I'm joined with the whole cast of teammates here today. We have our Director of Public Works, as, well, as long as our Director of Cultural Resources and NEPA Program Management. Um, we're also very fortunate to be joined by some colleagues from the Headquarters uh, Department of the Army as well. And so just in terms of opening comments, the only thing I would offer is first, thank you to the Commission for inclusion into this discussion. Um, you know, we acknowledge the Commission's got a very difficult and challenging job here trying to plan across the National Capital Region. Um, we're just grateful. We had a wonderful visit last summer with a whole host of folks over here. Um, and frankly, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge and thank Mr. Paul McMahon, who frankly has been very instrumental in ensuring that we are communicating effectively and timely what it is we're trying to do with the commission as we move forward. Um, I, we don't have any additional comments. Um, we are certainly standing by to help provide any additional clarity on joint base specific topics. Or, as I mentioned before, we do have some teammates out of, out of HPPA that are on the line as well. So we will pause and turn it back over to you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Ms. Herr. And thank you, Colonel um, Bowling. And we'll make sure that we do um, uh, take advantage of the uh, team you have assembled there if commissioners have any questions. Do commissioners have questions? Uh, I, I have a question, yes. Yes, your Commissioner Dixon. Go, going back to Henderson Hall, I want to know how close is the area we're working with to the Air Force Memorial area? I wasn't able to figure that out from the from the images. How close is it to that? Hey, uh, Commissioner Dixon, that, that's a great question. So, so there's a very clear delineation between the Air Force Memorial and the Joint Base Fencing. Now you may be aware that Arlington National Cemetery currently has an expansion project underway upon completion of which the uh, Air Force Memorial is, is basically gonna be in the middle of that expansion area. But the boundaries between Arlington National Cemetery and the Joint Base remain unchanged. Or okay, so it does, this particular area we're talking about does uh, abut the Air Force Memorial space as expanded and if, and if you're referring to the Arlington National Cemetery expansion, um, yes, the, the, uh, the yes, okay. 
Yes. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, and we can maybe uh, provide the commission with some additional details from Arlington National Cemetery, just so you have better awareness of, of the project itself. But yeah, at end state, the cemetery is going to expand, and it will, in fact, include the Air Force Memorial. Uh, it, it's sort of in the center of that expansion. Yeah, I understand that part. I'm really trying to get a sense of how close the work you're going to be doing is to that uh, expansion area in terms of its borders. Yeah, so we don't have any current or, or planned projects that's going to impede or impact uh, the Air Force Memorial uh, as of right now. Okay, I have a reason for my, my question, but I may want to go uh, uh, sidebar and talk about this at some other point with the staff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Commissioner Dixon. Are there any other questions from commissioners? Um, Commissioner, I, I have a question, but I, I don't think it's for the it's for the it's more for um, staff. I, I I'm I'm scratching my head on this one. I think the 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 demolition of the three buildings has taken up a lot of the oxygen in the room. But I'm more, I don't understand why we're looking at this without initiation of 106 consultation and without a TMP. I mean, I, I mean, we're often in the same position where we can't afford to do a TMP, but I don't recall an instance of being told, well, come on in and you can pay for it next year. I don't get that. Well, Actually, that's one of the reasons that it's on the agenda as a concept review. Um, we recognized early on that um, they didn't have everything for the draft level review, the big thing being that the TMP um, and the Section 106, but we still knew that it was worth providing comments because, because of the funding issue. It's going to take them a while to develop the TMP, and so we wanted to also give them the time to address the significant number of comments that we, along with other uh, partners, had on the ADP. So, uh, and I'll just add, so we did, we dropped it down to concept review. Uh, we used this opportunity to let the Army know of everything that we see as a problem. Um, but the other thing uh, we should note is that they would like to move forward with the new barracks at Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. Um, and that project will be coming in in the near future. Uh, so we do need to get some consensus from the commission as to whether they are you are okay with that whether they have followed the program comment because this was not in their previous master plan so that was the other reason we decided to move it forward as a concept so another so a project is going to come in for what concept approval or re concept review in, without as a, as a building as a building so the build the barracks building projects um right. i remember the courses of action that jamie went through the five different yeah. courses yes so the course five course of action where they would like to build two new buildings for housing that the, that specific project is going to come in this spring um and in that was not of an approved plan yes Yes, and, which we and have I done. guess I I guess I just don't I don't understand that little bass backwards. We have done that before, where an update to a master plan is moving along with, you know, the a project uh, coming in as well. Um, you know, the master plan is really asking, are you okay with the location of this new project? And then it is going to come, and so I guess. That's the question we were trying to get some some feedback on today for the Virginia campus side of this. Okay. Chair Goodman, you're on mute right now. I apologize. Thank you, That's Commissioner Wright. And I just was asking if there are any other questions from the commission before we move on to two of our speakers today. Yes, uh, Commissioner Green. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Goodman. Uh, Colonel Bowling, uh, I have a question for you. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. 
and I have a question uh, about Fort McNair and buildings 314, uh, 4, 13, and 15. Um, as was noted in the presentation, this wasn't in the 2000, the demolition was not in the 2014 master plan or in the current ADP. Could you speak to how this um, very particular provision found its way into the NDAA? Commissioner Green, thank you so much for the question. Uh, you know, I, I have a vague idea of sort of the events surrounding this and some of the details, but I'll be honest with you. I think our teammates at the Pentagon are better postured to provide comment, and I will defer to them. Uh, I think this is Carla Colson. I think I can answer that question if, uh, if you'd like. Carla, could you identify your position, please? Yes, I'm the Deputy Assistant Secretary uh, of the Army for Installations, Housing, and Partnerships, and um, work for the Assistant Secretary for Installations, uh, Energy, and Environment here in the in the Pentagon. Thank you. So, so I think I can explain, uh, you know, what happened, uh, and I'll try to be I'll try to be brief. Uh, we have uh, uh, the Hill uh, members of Congress, our Congressional Oversight Committees, and in this case it was the House Armed Services Committee has um, a complete oversight over all general officer quarters that we, uh, that we have in our inventory that we might renovate or build new, whether they're privatized or owned, and this happens to be part of the Army-owned inventory. Uh, of which we don't have much in the United States, uh, some overseas, but mostly everything in the US is privatized. But this is an owned inventory. And of course, these quarters are historic, they're old, and they're in need of renovation. So when we have a renovation project, uh, they are authorized and appropriated by our congressional oversight committees, uh, the House and the Senate Armed Services Committee authorize those projects. So we went forward um, in uh, fiscal year 23 with three projects for those three sets of quarters, uh, whatever the numbers are, 4, 13, and 15, or whatever the numbers are. They were projects to address primarily life health safety, not to go and completely remodel or the interiors or to move walls or to renovate kitchens or bathrooms or any of that. They were primarily uh, just you know, to address things like roofs, foundations, systems, electrical systems, plumbing. Uh, but the cost was extraordinary. And uh, I'm going to say that they were in excess of $3 million for a house to address life health safety, what we refer to as life health safety issues. Uh, so when, when they go forward, we, we would anticipate that we would have a lot of questions from the Hill because of the amount of, uh, amount of money it would take us to do the renovations. And so we did not receive authorization or appropriation of those funds at our request. What we received instead was the direction to demolish the houses. So the message is loud and clear from us or from the Hill to us. And that is we need to find uh, a way to better manage our historic properties. But I do not believe that they will uh, uh, under any circumstance, uh, whether that is just for life health safety or you know, take care of the systems in a house, or if we look at a full renovation, we did go to the Corps of Engineers and, and that, that uh, if we do a full renovation of these units, it's five to $6 million a house. They will not uh, agree to do that. Uh, so we've done, we've undertaken a significant study um, that I think is nearing conclusion to look at uh, cost benefit analysis and what some answers might be to manage the historic housing at both Fort Meyer and McNair. I think we received the initial, uh, the first version of that study just yesterday. So we haven't had the time to look at it yet, but hopefully it is, um, uh, the Corps of Engineers did, did the study. Uh, uh, and I think in, in consultation with, um, uh, you know, with, with many others to include those that have uh, a lot of interest in historic properties and historic housing. But we're looking to take that to, uh, you know, help guide some of our thinking and decision making as we continue to dialogue with uh, members of Congress and our congressional oversight committees to try to figure out what an appropriate way forward is with housing here in the NCR. So that's what happened. Uh, and uh, we certainly are not going to demolish these houses without any consultation uh, that's required. Uh, 
if you if you read the law, it says tear it says demolish the units. It doesn't it doesn't uh, say that uh, they've waived any any consultation. So it's nothing that that we're going to go in there with bulldozers and tear them down. That's not going to happen. Uh, so so we haven't taken any action yet. We haven't even looked at how we would fund the demolition of these houses. So uh, uh, but but that I think hopefully helps to explain to you a little bit with respect to. Um, the reason you're seeing this in, in public law. Over. Thank you for your um, uh, information shared. Are there other questions from the commission? Any more questions from the commissioners? Yes, if I could. Yes. Uh, I just want to follow up on that to be crystal clear, basically, you asked for money to do improvements to those buildings, and instead, uh, the Congress directed you to. That, that's correct. The the the, the uh, projects were in were in our request, the Department of Defense request for uh, the renovation of those three units. Okay, has that ever happened before? It has not. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner May. Are there other questions from commissioners? Yes, I have a question. Um, when in the in the conversations about the the proposed demolition, was there any that was there any discussion of precedent setting? Because the this is completely antithetical to the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966. I, 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 I can't, I, I, I can't imagine a conversation like this taking place without challenging, um, if for no other reason, the, the, the really sad and potentially invasive precedent that this sets. Um, and, and my second question is, was there any, or has there been any attempt, if, if all else fails, to, to, to try and raise private money to save these buildings? Because while I understand the price tag for, for a housing unit is, is, um, is, a, is a tough um, thing to swallow, it's not just a house. It's part of a larger composition that is, um, visible from <laughs> everywhere and and I I just it it's 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 sort of shocking so those are two questions one was there conversation about precedent setting and two was there conversation about um, um, trying to raise private money Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. And and also here on the line, we have uh, Miss Amy Borman, uh, who might want to uh, to jump in. She actually um, is our uh, um, our deputy assistant secretary for environment, safety, and occupational health, and has been working uh, on uh, our historic housing uh, for for many months now. But I will say, no, there was not any discussion about precedent, and we have not done anything. We have undertaken a study, also directed by Congress. Uh, uh, undertaken a study to try to assist us in better managing our historic uh, housing. And, and in that study, I'm sure there's going to be some discussion about, uh, you know, being able to or what we might be able to do from a, from a private or a public uh, perspective. Of course, you know, we have, and I'll just use the large set of, of uh, uh, general officer quarters out uh, at Rock Island Arsenal, the largest in the Army inventory. That was uh, quarters one uh, out there for many, many years. Uh, we have tried for many years to, to find private funding uh, as well as public funding to maintain that property and, and have been unsuccessful. So, so we have not, the Army has not had uh, a lot of success in doing that, but that of course does not mean that we wouldn't in this instance. Uh, so, so we are looking forward to the results of the study that we have, taking a look at it and then having a dialogue uh, amongst ourselves internally, of course, and then with our congressional oversight committees regarding how to best manage this property. Uh, and we're at the very beginning of that uh, uh, nascent stages of, of doing that. And, and, so, so, and so the second question or the first question was about, uh, to your knowledge, has there been a conversation about 
the precedent that that demolishing these buildings would set? Not with our congressional oversight committee uh, committees, no, ma'am. At least I haven't uh, had any uh, discussions of that nature with them. Well, at the very least, may I, I hope that w that we, our comments will include a suggestion that that conversation take place. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. Are there any additional questions? Any additional questions? Hearing none, uh, thank you for the questions and we're gonna move on. We have two people who are signed up to speak. Our first speaker is Rebecca Miller uh, with the DC Preservation League. Ms. Miller, are you representing uh, the organization? You are representing an organization and so you have five minutes to speak. Wonderful, thank you, Chair Goodman. Welcome to the NCPC. Uh, for those of you who have not met me before, it's been a while since DCPL has been before the commission. My name is Rebecca Miller. I'm the executive director of the DC Preservation League. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to comment uh, on our concerns with the proposed uh, master plan that's in front of you. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with us, uh, DCPL was founded in 1971 to save the old post office on Pennsylvania Avenue. And for more than 50 years, we've served as, city, as, as DC's citywide nonprofit advocate for the preservation, protection, and enhancement of the historically and culturally significant places of our nation's capital. Uh, given the organization's citywide focus, I'll reserve my comments to the portion of the master plan that affects Fort McNair. Um, as you've heard already, it's the third oldest army installation in the United States and the oldest in the District of Columbia. It holds national significance in the areas of architecture, military history, military education, and health and medicine. In addition to its original use for the city's defense, it has served as a penitentiary, barracks, hospital, and college throughout various periods of, its, of the nation's history. The fort's historic significance led to the Joint Committee on Landmarks, which is, was established by the National Capital Planning Commission, to include it in its first edition of the DC Inventory of Historic Sites in 1964. The site later became a National Historic Landmark. The historical importance of Fort McNair to the city and the country is indisputable, and the protection of its heritage assets should be of the utmost importance to this body and to the Army. DCPL recognizes that prior master planning documents did not call for the demolition of quarters 4, 13, and 15, and we're surprised that the buildings were included in the most recent submission. We also recognize that the demolitions are, not required, are now required due to the language inserted by an unknown legislator in the National Defense Authoriz Authorization Act. We echo the national trust and their request that further investigation occurs as to who inserted this last minute language and why they feel it's necessary. Designed by McKinney White at the request of President Th Theodore Roosevelt, the 16 quarters that line the Washington Channel, the Army War College, and other buildings built during the campus's most extensive building campaign tell a story of the Beaux-Arts movement and symmetry of design. This was an intentionally designed site, not one that is ad hoc. The demolition of quarters 4, 13, and 15 would adversely affect the integrity of the historic district. Not only are these proposed demolitions non-contiguous, they're leaving gaps between an intact ensemble of buildings, but there are no plans to replace the structures. In addition, no study that DCPL is aware of has been undertaken by the Army to address the effect of sea level rise at, at Fort McNair. These proposed demolition sites may very well be undevelopable in the future due to concerns about flooding and from what we've heard funding. DCPL joins the National Trust in urging the Army to initiate Section 106 consultation for this plan. Given the historic nature of this property, many parties across the city would be interested in these proposed plans. In addition, we are confident that many are unaware of the planning and or demolitions at Fort McNair, given its inclusion with the Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall Master Plan. The above concerns have led the DC Preservation League to add Fort McNair to its list of most endangered places in Washington. Since 1996, this list has drawn significant public attention to buildings and sites that are subject to neglect, ill-advised alteration, and in this case, demolition. D DCPL requests that the commission encourage the Army to initiate Section 106 and work with consulting parties to identify alternatives to the proposed demolitions on this un undeniably historic campus. I thank you for considering the views of the DC Preservation League and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Miller. And do, does the commission have any questions at this time for Ms. Miller? 
Okay, hearing none, I'm going to move on to the second speaker, and that is Elizabeth Merritt with the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Ms. Merritt, uh, you're going to have five minutes to speak as well, and welcome to the commission. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Merritt, Deputy General Counsel at the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and we thank you for the opportunity to share our concerns about the proposed concept area development plan for Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall in Virginia and Fort McNair in Washington, D.C. While much of the proposed conceptual plan is appropriate, Unfortunately, it proposes to demolish multiple contributing buildings within the Fort McNair Historic District, and some of these proposed demolitions are inexplicable. We understand that the Commission's review authority does not extend to approving demolition. However, your opportunity to review and comment on a conceptual master plan that calls for demolition should include their consideration in that context. Of course, the most troubling proposed demolitions are those of quarters 4, 13, and 15, all of which are contributing resources to the Fort McNair Historic District and highly significant. Um, as we learned this morning, the reason for the inexplicable last minute inclusion of their demolition in the National Defense Authorization Act was apparently had to do with uh, high cost estimates for repairs. and. Um, we hope to use the Section 106 process to address alternatives uh, to this approach, and we intend to follow up with congressional staff as well and with the Army, including a request that the Army complete the report requested by Congress almost a year ago um, that, would, that would address this issue. Um, I also want to mention that um, we we note that there are multiple demolitions proposed under the area development plan that utilize the program comment for the Army interwar historic housing that was adopted by the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation in 2020. And I want to provide just a little context. We don't dispute that the Army comply has complied with this program comment, but I want to provide a little context. This program comment passed the Advisory Council by just one vote, and it was strongly opposed by the National Trust and the National Conference of State Historic Preservation Officers, in large part because of the inclusion of demolition within its scope. The Army at the time assured the members of the Advisory Council that it would rarely be invoked for demolition, since its primary purpose was supposed to be to address repetitive maintenance actions. Instead, the Army now characterizes the program comment as being essentially for the purpose of facilitating demolition. Um, we would like to urge the Army to initiate Section 106 consultation for this master plan. In our view, it should have already been initiated, but it will involve the input of two different state historic preservation offices and interested parties like the National Trust and DC Preservation League. And this could lead to the identification of alternatives and modifications to the master plan that could help to avoid and minimize its adverse effects. Uh, and those alternatives and mod modifications should be incorporated. Finally, we, we agree with the commission that um, the Army needs to address more broadly the threat of sea level rise at Fort McNair in its master plan. The Army should develop a plan to protect Fort McNair's historic properties in a way that is consistent with the Army's stewardship responsibilities under the National Historic Preservation Act. The National Park Service has been engaged in thoughtful work to address this issue nearby at the Tidal Basin in Haynes Point, and we suggest that the Commission could encourage the Army to uh, begin to address this issue more comprehensively. In light of these deficiencies, um, we hope the Commission will encourage the Army to go back and take a step back and develop a new conceptual plan that takes these issues into account. We thank you again for the opportunity to voice our concerns and for considering the comments of the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Thank you very much, Ms. Merritt. Uh, does the commission have any questions at this time for Ms. Merritt? Any questions? 
Hearing none, that concludes the public testimony on this proposal. Um, and now I'm gonna open it up for commission discussion. Commission uh, discussion, can uh, everyone please turn on your cameras and I'm gonna start with Commissioner McMahon. Uh, please keep your web cams on during the conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Chair Goodman, I appreciate it. Um, this is a you know, multifaceted plan, you know, across the two installations. Uh, so two pieces of the conversation. I think um, in my discussions uh, ahead of today's meeting with the Army, I think the, the legislative language in the FY23 NDA certainly has caught everybody by surprise. Um, and it sounds like the Army, uh, with Ms. Cole's support, will we'll sort through all that as they determine uh, what actions they'll be taking and how they work with their committees on uh, in the FY24 program on, on that piece. Certainly the comments and um, and concerns as they continue to develop ADP, most especially on the TMP, um, I think are valid and need to be need to be resolved. Um, TMP is a key part of the ADP process and needs to be done before the ADP comes back to us um, for a wholesale revision. Um, I think that's and obviously sea level rise plays in that too. In terms of Fort Myer, I think that seems fairly well thought out. Um, I think the commission has raised, staff has raised a lot of uh, good questions and comments for the Army to consider. And I thank them for their efforts. Um, I think besides that, at this point, I have no additional comments. Thank you, Commissioner McMahon. Thank you very much. And now, uh, Commissioner May, please. So um, I, I think I, I, at another time, we'll need to understand better why NCPC um, does not have authority over demolitions. Is that like the first time I've heard that stated so specifically? And I imagine it's embedded somewhere in our rules, but I don't know that, you know, after 15 years, I might've heard that before, um, but it's, I don't know, maybe it's the first time it came up. Again, that, that's a sidebar I can the staff and some other time, it's, it's a little, um, I do understand why, you know, at our, the Congress, they said, tear the buildings down. The, uh, uh, you know, the building theoretically has to be torn down. Although I think there are, you know, there are some hurt there for that. And certainly 106 consultation makes sense. Um, I'm from one of my staff and I'm breaking up. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, okay. So it'd be on. Oh, okay. Is this any better? Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. Not sure what was going on there. All right. Um, um, I don't need to repeat all that. Uh, the uh, will uh, note that I did go on the tour. Uh, I'll back my at um, uh, for my person hall. Commissioner, you are still breaking up on and off. Um, Try turning your camera off. Indeed. All right. I'll try again. Now, Thank you. Now I'm just a voice, a disembodied <laughs> voice. Anyway, so uh, Fort Myer, uh, Henderson Hall, I did go on that tour. Uh, that was interesting uh, and enlightening because I saw parts of that base that I'd never seen before. Uh, on that tour, um, it was it's clear that there are portions of uh, or buildings on the site that need a lot of attention. Uh, and so I think it's very good that um, this action is being taken to develop the ADP and to look at things comprehensively. Um, I will also say that much of the more recent architecture, and I can't remember whether it's, you know, where it is compared to the NHL boundary and things like that. Much of the recent architecture, when I say recent, like within the last probably 30 years, is not very good. Mm -hmm. And it's just sort of, um, you know, historicist, you know, imitation of general building forms without the kind of detail and attention that makes it into a decent building. And so, I mean, there are a lot of buildings there that I would want to tear down just because they're ugly. Um, that's 
I fear that we're heading in that direction now with the proposed new buildings. So putting aside, this, you know, I agree with with much of what's been said about Section 106 consultation, uh, and I'll, I'll return to that. But just putting that aside, I just have a general concern about the design of the building that may be coming to us in a few months. Um, it is, um, and, and again, what we what we saw today was not encouraging from a design perspective. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to understand that a lot better and um, you know, take a good hard look at whether this is in fact um, going to be a positive addition to that uh, to that base. If it doesn't have the kind of uh, detailing and depth and sort of understanding of the forms that is necessary to make it into a, you know, make it into good buildings. I mean, it just, it's, like I said, I have concerns about that. Um, Section 106 consultation, I agree, should um, be uh, started as soon as possible and should have started already. Mm -hmm. uh, not only that, the NHL con consultation that is necessary at both locations, because we have an, um, uh, an NHL on both sites, um, it's um, it, it hasn't happened. Um, I consult, consulted with the National Park Service's uh, NHL coordinator, who is supposed to be involved in any projects that involve NHLs, and um, she was not aware of this area development plan happening now. And uh, so, and, and she cited some very specific concerns with some of the building projects that are proposed, particularly at Fort McNair, where some of the building projects that are uh, within or very close to the NHL area, the NHL district at that site, um, have not been, um, are well, are potentially damaging to the NHL. So I, I, that does need serious attention, and uh, I would recommend that that begin right away. Um, and I think even you know when it comes to the 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 proposed building that's coming in the in the uh, uh, in the next few months, I would like our uh, NHL office to be involved in the discussions about what's happening um, so that you know everything is being done appropriately and you're hearing the right voices. So um, I think that's it for what I need to say. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner May and Commissioner Argo. Commissioner Argo, you're on mute. Well, that would be why you couldn't hear me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, you know, I'm, 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 I feel kind of fumbling around here and I don't, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I was going to just align myself with uh, Commissioner May's comments, which I'll still do anyway. But I guess, and I'm, I'm going to ask what is probably considered a, you know, a, a really gnarly question: um, is, you know, is the action requested of us today considered by, considered? Is anybody? thinking that it's preliminary at this point that I I'm just I'm leaving that as an open question are we um, with approval of this are we boxing ourselves in in any way with regard to some of the questions that we've raised about Ms. this Sullivan yeah, I'm sorry you are not approving anything you're just providing comments okay it's <laughs> just a, a concept. And it's so, as low as it can go. Yeah. Okay. Lowest level. Okay. I, I just want to be really clear. About I, and I'm being crystal story. clear. Also, yes. <laughs> no approval. And, yeah. And and so and so aligning and that's fine. It appears as though um, there are significant comments coming from the commissioners as well as the staff that um that i would align myself with as well and um would like to 
as a separate thing here more, um, and I'm trying to figure out making sure we work something into the comments, as Commissioner May suggested about the Section 106 alternative. And um, I guess, I, because this is interesting, I haven't heard anything like this since I've been on the commission. Also, where we have this congressional action that that precedes our review and puts us in, I would, in in my view, in a little, in, in a more, in a different position and kind of a difficult position. I will leave it at that. Thank you, Commissioner Argo. Commissioner Hewlett? Yeah, um, I would like to echo the sentiments of um, Commissioners May and, and Argo. Um, you know, we're, uh, this is this is a tough situation where you have these uh, acts and laws that conflict with, or mm -hmm. this particular case conflict with each other. Um, but do they have to? Mm -hmm. Do they really and truly have to? So I, I really um, um, empathize and support the statements of Ms. Merritt and Ms. Miller on behalf of the DC Preservation League and the right. National Trust. Um, they raise very good points. Um, and just because you can doesn't mean you have to. Yeah. Um, so, and, and, I, and it looks like um, our own general counsel, um, Skyler, and Skyler was attempting to address, I guess it's the question raised by Commissioner May regarding um, the commission's lack of authority regarding um, um, demolitions. So I, you know, I'd like to hear from her as well on that issue if it, because it's probably germane to the comments that we're hearing. So that's all I have at this point. Thank you, Commissioner Hewlett. Commissioner Green. Thank you. I, you know, buildings for, 13 and 15 are, you know, significant contributing buildings to the Fort McNair Historic District. I mean, these buildings are, you know, designed by McKinney and White. They're essential character defining features of Fort McNair. The integrity of the Potomac facing row requires the continued presence of each and every one of these buildings. I mean, their loss would be irreplaceable and every individual loss would irrevocably degrade the integrity of the whole. Now, the 2000 master plan does not call for the removal proposed master plan changed the terms unexpectedly without within but with no explanation within the master plan presenting the reasons for this demolition and the master plan also provides no guidance for what's to occur on these three sites should this ill-advised demolition occur and i acknowledge council's argument that ncpc does not have jurisdiction over demolition though that warrants further discussion however i suggest this is not a demolition request this is a master plan that calls for the demolition of buildings 4, 13, and 15. We've been asked to comment on the master plan. And in that spirit, I believe it's appropriate to ask for efforts to seek the removal of the section calling for the demolition of buildings 4, 13, and 15 through appropriate channels and to work with the Department of the Army's planning staff, National Trust, and the DC Preservation League and any other interested parties to, to, to see if it might be possible to remove those that section from the NDAA. And that would certainly support the goal of retaining historic character, which is set out in the ADP, which frames our review. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Green. Commissioner Wright. Well, I'm just going to pile on. Um, I, 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 I hear the trust loud and clear. Yes, apparently we don't have authority over demolitions, but we do have um, we we have uh, authority to comment stealthily on on the on the plan in total, and and as a, as somebody who works every day in this world, I cannot emphasize enough that this that letting this pass um, undermines the efficacy of the entire preservation movement in the federal government, and that is not a, a, a hysterical statement it's a statement of fact because the reason in part that the the nhpa was created in the first place was because obviously preservation many times yes it can save us money but there are instances and and i and, and i totally understand when i ask the question um yes when you look at it as a a, a um as a price tag for a home, 
a single family home, wow. But it's it's more than that, as Commissioner Green just stated. It's part of this entire composition. And what we're what we're looking at, it's like punching somebody's teeth out and then having no plan for 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 a, a, a root canal and a new cap. I mean, it, it that that there's no plan. It, there's no the plan doesn't speak to replacement. So if demolition occurs, then we just have these empty lots at at four, thirteen, and fifteen. I'm, and and I just like to say again, this is this is not unusual. We see this, for example, at NICMAC on the Memorial Advisory Commission. We get contradictory um, um, direction uh, many times. For example, you know, when, with the location of uh, Congress um, send, makes a law that says um, a monument or a building, which we've recently seen, um, needs to go inside area one or in the reserve where we've where where the Commemorative Works Act specifically says that's not to be the case. So we it's not unprecedented where we see um, contradictory legislation. And I and I hope that we can get uh, a league of, of of lawyers involved here because I I I I'm it this is a breathtaking precedent that we that would be set here. We would in effect be saying to every federal agency, well, if you don't have it in your budget, I mean and we're already doing it here. Oh, you don't have the money for a TMP? Well, we'll wait. Well, since when? I, I and this that's what I alluded to earlier, where we have these these shared understandings of how this process works and, and suddenly we're going off the rails today. And I don't really understand why. And I think that there's um there's every reason here for for um for all of us to sound an alarm because the 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 implications of letting this pass are are quite significant. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. I appreciate that. And um, Ms. Geiler, I see your hand up, but I'm going to wait and let uh, Commissioners Dixon, Cash, Davis, and Cozart contribute uh, before I, I call on you to give us the information that I know you're going to share. So Commissioner Dixon, do you have a comment? I have uh, actually two packs I would take. First one may be a little light. Uh, I would have fought hard historically for the golf course to stay on this property, but they took it away from this space. Uh, I will also say that uh, I apologize that I may have been part of some demolition earlier, some of my stray shots against some of these buildings, but uh, that was many years ago. Uh, moving to maybe a more serious uh, attack, I, I, I face this, we all face this, certainly we face this problem in our own communities. We have historical buildings that residents and others can't afford the price of repairing them. And oftentimes the result is they just fall apart and then there's nothing that can be done about it. But uh, to have the resources to do this is important. Uh, and uh, I support that idea that we, we need to maintain these buildings uh, if we can. So I'm waiting to see where we go with this, but I definitely think it's important. And also would like to ask that we be hesitant on the, we've been using a lot of acronyms and the public is watching this. I hope they can, they know I, I found my way through it, but it's helpful to use. Maybe we think about that a little bit. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Dixon. And I would agree with you as a newcomer, I, I would remind everyone if you have an opportunity to actually use you know, the name of these organizations, it would be helpful for the public and, and also for new learners. So thank you um, again, Commissioner Dix and Commissioner Cash. Commissioner uh, Davis. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate the presentation and, and the comments of the other commissioners. I don't have anything else to add. Thank you very much, Commissioner Davis and Commissioner Cozart. Yes, thank you. I'm going to focus my comments on Fort McNair due to its location in the district. Uh, the Buzzard Point neighborhood where Fort McNair is located has been identified as an area for resilience forward redevelopment as highlighted in the comprehensive plan for the district and the Buzzard Point vision uh, framework and design review guide. 
Fort McNair can be a model for resilience, use and preservation of historic assets and coordination with the local community, all while meeting the Army's needs to improve the facility's function and maintain security. As documented in the NCPC staff report, the draft concept area development plan has yet to live up to that vision. This missed opportunity would best be remedied by engaging in the required section 106 consultation, as well as coordination with district government agencies who've weighed in with a number of uh, issues related to flood mitigation, resilience, historic preservation, and urban design. And so we ask that the Army meaningfully engage the district government and other affected stakeholders so that the plan can be a success. Those are my comments. Thank you very much, Commissioner Kozart. I appreciate those remarks as well. And I'm going to call on, before I make my remarks, I'd like to call on Ms. Schuyler, um, who has some information for the commission. Uh, thank you. I don't know if my video is on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. I'm, yes. Sorry your video. To, I'm sorry to sort of barge into your meeting, but there are a couple of issues I would hopefully address to help you with your the commission with its decision making. Um, Commissioner May raised the issue of NCPC's lack of authority over demolition. It's very interesting that this only came up for the first time um, with when the uh, Smithsonian Institution proposed the demolition of the Basel Center, which was a small annex to the Air and Space Museum. And at the time, former Chair uh, White asked about what was the basis for our not having the authority. And interestingly enough, it was a question of first impression. I do have historical general counsel, NCPC general counsel, um, prior uh, legal opinions, and I found nothing nothing on it. So I, I, I analyzed and reviewed the National Capital Planning Act, which is our organic legislation, and the result of which was as follows. One, our authority is predicated on what if you look at all the language, what comes after demolition, we kind of regulate the development. Um, so we don't go pre-development. I found no language to support our doing that, both direct or indirect or implied. Second, demolition is really a regulatory function. Typically in a, in a local setting, demolition requires a permit from a local authority. We um, have planning and zoning authority, but we do not have regulatory authority. So based on this analysis, I concluded that we lack the authority over demolition. And I'm certainly happy after this meeting to have the um, the legal opinion that I drafted shared with all the commissioners, I'll ask um, Secretary Coster to disseminate it amongst you. Um, second, I want to address um, the issue raised by uh, Commissioner Green that because the demolition is embedded in a plan, we can in fact address it. Um, we can talk about it, yes. We can direct our displeasure towards it, yes, but we cannot notwithstanding its inclusion in the plan, still take any direct action on that particular, on demolition as, as, a, as we can't take, we cannot take action on demolition. The third issue I'd like to raise is one that you've been talking about, which is asking the army to, to raise the precedence of the, his, the demolition of the structures with their appropriators. And I do believe that that is, not an appropriate uh, direction that the commission should take. Um, I certainly don't think any of our federal members would appreciate other agencies or uh, would appreciate hearing that they should go to their appropriators and, and pursue a particular approach. But having said that, I think we have drafted some language. If you feel strongly and want a recommendation in the DDR, EDR that kinds of kind of puts the army in that direction without overtly saying you must go to your appropriators. And uh, uh, Diane Sullivan, I think would be willing to share that if a motion is made to change the EDR. 
So having said that, I'm, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that anybody might have. I want to recognize Commissioner Wright for a comment. I have a question, Anne. Um, so, if the plan, if if so, so the, one of the things to me that's quite notable about the plan is that there is nothing. It's silent on on. Well, it's not actually silent. It 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 commits to the fact that there's no plan for following demolition to build on those sites. So if so so would the commission have the right to comment because there have been cases gsa has been involved with them um to my knowledge where demolitions have occurred to make room for another building in in fact the purpose of the the purpose of the demolition was directly tied to some need or desire for a different building uh, type or what have you in this on the same site so the question is does the lack is it the lack of a, a, an intended reuse of the site that which precludes the commission from having the authority to review it and or approve you see what i'm saying I I do understand, and I think the, 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 the point to be made is the commission does have authority to regulate the subsequent development at the time that it is proposed. Here, it's not proposed. If they were proposing right. demolition and in the next breath saying, and we're going to do X, Y, and Z, right. the commission could comment on X, Y, and Z, but not go to the issue whether the demolition to allow X, Y, and Z was appropriate. So it is the absence of a of a published intent to replace these buildings that precludes us from authority over it. I is think I, well, I want to be careful here because even if there is a proposed onward plan, we still can't you can comment on that, but we still can't comment on the demolition. So in a way, yes, it is the absence, but demolition is off limits because it's not within the authority of the commission subsequent development on the cleared demolished on the cleared site where the demolition occurred is within the commission's authority okay okay are you got finished it? thank you. yeah i got it thank you thank mm -hmm. you commissioner wright and miss schuyler and now commissioner may has a comment yeah i'm i have to say i'm truly baffled by this opinion. Um, I am not a lawyer and I haven't looked at any of the documentation, but <laughs> my attitude toward this is that putting up a building and removing a building are very similar actions. They are both forms of development, right? If you take a building away, that is a form of development. So I will be very interested in reading the opinion that you've written. Uh, and running it by my colleagues and my attorneys because we have a stake in this as well. Um, the department, as a as a as a represented on the commission, uh, has you know we have a lot of stake in what goes on with the commission. And I really do think that uh, the 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 notion that demolition is not covered under NCPC's authority, I think, is is just doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe well, I think, I'm sorry. Sense. I, I think it's interesting that in doing the research, we couldn't find any prior reviews of demolition. So oh. that in and of itself said something very strongly to me. But I definitely will share the opinion and you're welcome to share it with your attorney. And I'd be very happy to talk to your attorneys with about it. Okay. But demolition divorced from new development is unusual in and of itself in a, in a, in in the kinds of 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 locations that we review i, I can't I i'm sorry but, thank you i believe yeah, I, I was going to say i believe in the case of the basal center we knew generally what was coming but we did not have specific plans upon which we could comment so i don't think I, it's I don't think it's enough to have just an idea that it's going to be redeveloped. 
Yeah, I, I mean, again, the mere removal of a building is a, is a development of the site in, in, in my view. And I, you know, maybe it hasn't come up before because we are, you know, we've always done things very systematically and you get the, the master plan and you see, well, when this building goes away, then we're going to put this up. Effectively, what you're saying is that I could take a historic building on my on, on National Park Service property and demolish it and NCPC would have no role. We would still have to do NEPA compliance and, and Section 106, but the, the National Capital Planning Commission would not have a role. That just does not make any sense to me. So that's why I'm really interested in seeing the opinion. Okay. Yeah, I don't think and, we should belabor this, so um, yeah. I'll get that and out as soon I, as possible. And it's, and it's and, moot and here. I, it's moot in the case of gonna, these buildings. Right. Sorry. But I do, I do want to thank uh, Commissioner May and Commissioner Wright for their input, and especially thank you uh, to Ms. Schuyler for participating and offering to share this information going forward. I do see um, Ms. Her has had her hand up for some time, and I wanted to recognize her. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to clarify based on the comments that the ADP, which was completed um, in spring of 2021, does not include the demolition of buildings four, 13, and 15. We included it as part of our review because we were aware of the NDAA when it was before it was signed and then when it was signed and made official. Um, the ADP does not include the demolition of these buildings. The ADP lists the all 15 buildings as a renovation project. Um, and so there's no plan in the ADP to replace them or demolish them. The NDAA calls for their demolish the demolishment of the buildings, which is separate from the ADP. That's I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, uh, thank you, Miss Her, very much. And um, I would like to thank you for your presentation today, and and just make my comment. I I agree that um, uh, these uh, facilities and the campus contribute mightily to the cultural landscape of Washington D.C. And these are cultural assets that are, I think, merit uh, preservation and conservation. Uh, they're very significant assets, not just to the DC and the district area, but also to the rest of the country and to our history. So I, I just wanna underscore that there is a significant amount of work that is yet to be done on, on, on this project and on this presentation for future uh, meetings. And I also am just really baffled at, at the fact that this is all in a floodplain, really. I mean, this is in a very precarious location uh, when it as it relates to water and, and the future. Um, um, just based on last month's presentation on the Potomac uh, seawalls and the efforts that are being uh, taken to, to protect that area from um, infiltration, but also inundation, it seems to me that there needs to be more work done, especially on, on the on the um, on the uh, impact of of uh, water to this area and the impact on the whole space and site and whether you know conservation and preservation doesn't need to expand beyond um, beyond what's there today. So I'm just again as, as in closing would like to encourage the Army to take a comprehensive look at Fort McNear's future and to continue to work with NCPC staff and the district and other stakeholders. And I do want to thank uh, my fellow commissioners for all their comments and and. Uh, uh, input today because I think it's been it's been productive. Uh, so that being said, are there any further comments or questions by commissioners or comments from presenters? Hearing oh yes, Commissioner Kosar. Thank you. I had a question in her comments. Um, Skyler referenced that um, Ms. Sullivan might have alternative language that could be added to the EDR. And I wanted to ask a question about if we as a commission wanted to modify the EDR, I wanted to uh, get clarity about what that language might be or clarity about if that language exists. That was in reference to Commissioner Wright's uh, comment about precedent setting. Uh, if I understood correctly, uh, Commissioner Wright, you had suggested making a comment on that. Did I get that right? Uh, I, 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 I think we would be remiss if we did not include uh, language that does note 
what an awful precedent this sets for federal historic preservation. Yes. I mean, okay. I, without it, I, I, I'm voting no. Okay, so what I had here and this may not be strong enough, but advises the Army to consider the negative precedents associated with the demolition of these historic buildings and to undertake appropriate actions to address the issue. I will say that second part, I'm, I'm, we may, may stop it before the second part. So let me read the first part, which was advises the Army to consider the negative precedents associated with the demolition of these historic buildings. I think I am, I'm sorry. sorry, go ahead, Commissioner Wright. I, I think negative precedents, but also the, the broader implications for federal preservation policy writ large. I okay. mean, I really, I really fervently believe this. This is, um, you know, uh, this is, this it has very broad implications because if all a federal agency has to do is say, well, we can't afford it, well, that everybody and their brother is going to be lining up to say we can't afford it. Thank you, Commissioner Wright. My question for Diane and staff then is, uh, would that be an amendment to a motion to approve the comments with that amendment? Approve comments on the master plan with that specific amendment and would uh, Ms. Koster or yes. Ms. Sullivan be able to read that motion to us? Or is there a motion or is there a commissioner who would like to make the motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. Well, Thank you, Commissioner Wright. Commissioner McMahon is you, his hands up. Yeah, I, 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 My I hear all this, but listen, no, no, quite all right. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, hey, I've got a concern uh, with, with the uh, um, change that's just been moved, uh, but not seconded, um, especially in the way that uh, um, Ms. Wright appropriately has identified the potential broad issue to NCPC of this general concept. And especially as uh, um, uh, staff have pointed out is that in reality, um, uh, we've noted this commission appropriately on some congressional action that is not part of an ADP. And yet now we're expecting the Army and the Department of Defense to go back and carry our water force and what we're identifying as a major federal issue, I think there must be a better way to handle it. And I'm, I'm not sure I can support the uh, the motion to amend. Over. Thank you, Commissioner McMahon. Uh, Ms. Coster, you had a comment? Uh, I just wanted to say that um, typical commission practice is first to move an amendment, make sure we've got the language, second it, and then vote on that, and then based on whether that advances forward, then we would take a motion on the amended um, on the amended EDR, if that's helpful procedurally. But um, and I'm happy also at any point to work with Ms. Sullivan to revise and reread the suggested language. Thank you, Ms. Coster. Um, I see a hand up there for Commissioner May. Yeah, um, I was wondering if we could hear the amendment once again, because I wanted to address Commissioner McMahon's concern if I could. So if you could read it. Yep. The, the simple version. Okay, here we go. Advises the Army to consider the negative precedents and the broader implications for federal preservation with the demolition of these historic buildings. So, um, I mean, there, there might be a different way to um, to phrase that, but I would say that, I, you know, this is not putting the burden for fixing everything on um, the Department of Defense. It, but it is sort of raising that flag that this action has implications that go well beyond the particular project. And so, um, I mean, you know, like I said, maybe it could be tweaked a little bit so that Commissioner McMahon is more comfortable with it. Um, but I do, I agree, it makes sense to say something about it. I would not go, you know, that the, the additional language that Ms. Sullivan had originally read, I think was, um, crossing well it was going a little bit too far 
um, because we can't really urge specific action. And, and all we're doing is asking that this be considered in that context. And I think it would be informative to um, DOD leadership to, to understand right. uh, where, what we think about it. So I agree. Um, Commission, thank you. I'm sorry, go ahead. Didn't mean to cut you off. No, I'm done yeah, for okay, now. Commissioner, Commissioner Dixon and then Ms. Coster. Yeah, I just am kind of curious. I thought our general counsel suggested that this area of demolition was not within our scope, but now we are making comments in this document about it. And I'm not sure whether or not, you know, we don't need to get a little bit more clarity on whether we should or should not speak to this. Uh, and uh, before we start making comments in our documents that we send out about demolition, I just don't know if we can, we can do that. I should do that. But aren't, aren't we kind of splitting hairs because we're addressing the aftermath of demolition, which is very much part of this plan? Yeah, we are, but we are actually, uh, it, by doing that, we are, we are making a statement about the plan. Uh, and, I, and I agree that we need to be concerned about the historical stuff, but do we have a deal with demolition? Can we to that, that area? I don't know. Um, that's probably for Thank you. Scholar. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dixon. Commissioner Hewlett. Um, yeah, I first I'm used to the motion in the second and then the discussion. So I was trying to second the motion um, as as read by Ms. Sullivan um, so, so that we could get to this point. And just for purposes of discussion, which I guess we're already having, but I'm willing to second the motion on the amendment. Thank you, Ms. Hewlett. Ms. Coster? or Commissioner Hewlett, Ms. Coster. Um, I, un, unless, uh, I, I'm happy to just, at this point say a motion was made by Commissioner Wright, uh, seconded by Commissioner Hewlett, and I will read it uh, again um, to make sure that I've got it here correctly which is advises the Army to consider the negative precedent and broader implications for federal historic preservation associated with the demolition of these historic buildings. And if, uh, and if you wanted, it could be these historic buildings at Fort McNair. Thank you, think Ms. Coster. It looked like Ms. Sullivan wanted to add something. Uh, I was just going to say, right. I think it's clear if we just moved, um, just said advises the Army to consider the negative precedents with the demolition of these historic buildings and, and the broader implications for federal preservation. So just move the last piece up. Same words, just rearranging. Do you want me to say that again, Julia? No, I think, uh, let me see if I got it here, which is advises the Army to consider the negative precedent uh, or precedence, I think it's what you had, with the demolition of these historic buildings at Fort McNair and broader implications for federal historic preservation. Um, and I will also look to uh, Commissioner Wright uh, since she's... Yeah, I would say the net, the net, uh, precedent set by because it. I don't know. My English teacher is. It, my inner English teacher is frustrated. <laughs> and thank you very much, Commissioner Wright and Jill and or Miss Coster and, and Miss Sullivan. Um, I I am going to just point of information here. It's, I am also. Um, as Commissioner Hewlett pointed out, I am accustomed to a motion being on the floor before discussion and then, you know, moving uh, to a vote with an amendment. So I'm not clear. Do we have a motion or an amendment? It's been referred to as uh, both. So is this a, is this our it, motion uh, following the conversations? I, I'm uh, making a motion to amend the EDR with the language that Ms. Sullivan and Ms. Coster have just enumerated. Thank you. And, and Commissioner Hewlett seconded that. Okay. Thank you. So I, I think I, this I, I do think okay. um, I I'm, thought I heard it was a motion on the amendment itself. Did I hear that? Okay. I just wanted to note uh, Commissioner McMahon still had his hand raised. 
I apologize, Commissioner McMahon. Yeah. So sorry. No, it's uh, this is uh, one of the more contentious meetings we've had in quite a while. So, um, <laughs> welcome aboard. Um, uh, I, I still listen to the language <laughs> and I listen to development, uh, especially some of Ms. Harris' comments later on about what the ADP includes and doesn't include. And I, I still disagree with the include with an amendment to the EDR on on this particular topic on on these three units at Fort McNair. Uh, yeah, Fort McNair. Um, I think it's setting a bad precedent for, frankly, uh, the DOD and a federal agency in common because we're we're still going back and say, hey, you guys in the army, we don't like what the Congress did. You guys should go fix it. And that's a paraphrase, but I think that's how it's going to be taken. And I'm not sure it's appropriate. Thank you. Well, now that there's a, a motion on the floor, and um, I, I would like to ask if there's any further discussion related to Commissioner McMahon's comments. Well, hearing none, um, Ms. Koster, could you please um, confirm the motion, the second, and take the roll call vote? Certainly. Uh, the motion was made by Commissioner Wright, the second by Commissioner Hewlett, uh, and this is a motion to amend the EDR to say advises the Army to consider the negative precedent set by the demolition of these historic buildings at Fort McNair and broader implications for federal historic preservation. And with that, I'll take the roll call. Commissioner Kozar? Yes. Commissioner McMahon? No. Commissioner May? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Argo? Yes. Commissioner Hewlett? Yes. Chair Goodman? Yes. Commissioner Green? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. And Commissioner Dixon? Abstain. Uh, Commissioner Davis? Abstain. Thank you. Um, the motion has carried, and this concludes our open session agenda. No, no, no. Or, wait a minute. I'm sorry. And now apologies. we actually, and, and now we have to actually vote on the EDR as amended. My apologies. So we will need a motion and second for that. That's okay. This has been a little, little more um, complicated than. Thank I move you. Of the motion as amended. Thank you, Commissioner Hewlett. Let's second that. And that is seconded by Commissioner May. So the motion was made by uh, Commissioner Hewlett uh, to move the amended EDR, seconded by Commissioner May. And with that, Commissioner Cozart? Yes. Commissioner McMahon? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. Commissioner Argo? Yes. Commissioner Hewlett? Yes. Chair Goodman? Yes. Commissioner Green? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Commissioner Dixon? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Abstain. So uh, that motion has carried. Thank you. Thank you. The motion has carried and um, that this now concludes our open session agenda and our next regular commission meeting will be in um, Thursday, March 2nd, 2003 at 1 p.m. And if there is no further business, the session is now adjourned. <laughs>